Yeah, we're back. It's AASLR right. once again. And uh, we're here with Eric again. Again, because trying a, a redo. The redo. <laughs> the redo. Why is this a redo, Eric? This this is a redo because I was here, it has to be a month or two ago, right right after DEF CON. And it was funny because we were sitting here chatting before uh, that, that webcast. And we were talking about how everybody caught COVID from DEF CON, or at least a large portion of people. And I was saying how I did not. I was lucky. It, everything was great. It was a couple of weeks later, and I was in the clear. Unfortunately, uh, I found out that my daughter had caught it from school and then brought it home. So we started the webcast Ugh. a couple of months ago after DEF CON. We started. We're sitting here. I was all ready. And suddenly, we said go, and I could not remember anything. I think I got my topics out. I could be wrong. I think I got it out, but I sounded like a blathering idiot. And it turns out that I had COVID. And the next day I was not feeling really good. And the day after I was completely wiped out. So I'm here to try and, and you know, bring back my name and actually maybe show that I, I kind of know what I'm talking about. And I just don't ramble all the time. <laughs> so. So we can, we can go back and call the other one the COVID edition. And That's the COVID the edition. -COVID exactly. Non-COVID. Right. Exactly. Very important. Very Which important. Which is kind of backwards from like the director's cut or joke. <laughs> but we'll go with it. We'll go yeah, with we'll it. Yeah, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. Absolutely. Are you ready to get to it? Sure. Sure. Thank you I'm for having me bring you up again. on screen. No All problem. Right. So what we're here to talk about is a couple of extra ways that you might be able to get information out of Active Directory. Now, what I do, uh, like probably many of you who are on the, the, the webcast here, uh, I do penetration testing for a company called Secure Ideas. We're partnered with Anti-Siphon for training and, and webcasts and, and many other things. Uh, but I do pen testing all the time. But my focus has really been Active Directory for quite a while. Um, I've been lucky enough to work with it since it was released, actually before it was released. Uh, and I really enjoy it. Getting a little long in tooth now, but still used almost everywhere that you have Windows devices in an enterprise. Um, and as everybody knows, Active Directory is a very prime target uh, for any attacker, right? Whether that's a pen tester or an actual uh, malicious actor in the environment. Part of that is getting information out of AD. Now, Active Directory itself is a directory. So you're supposed to be able to get information out of it, right? Almost everything is readable by anyone who has any account that is in that directory. So as soon as you get credentials, you can start searching for information. It used to be that everything except your basic password hashes was readable, but then a couple of enhancements have come in over the last 20 years. Um, one of those is the idea of a confidential attribute. That is a, a piece of information that is attached to an object in Active Directory that is not supposed to be readable by everyone. Microsoft realized that maybe we, we do want to have some things that can't be read by a normal user. Now, these confidential attributes typically contain what's considered a, a piece of password information. So not a password hash like you're looking for uh, quite often so that you can do other attacks, you know, golden ticket, et cetera, things like that with Mimikatz, but other password information like lapse passwords, uh, BitLocker recovery passwords, um, other potential password-like things that other applications have put in your directory. So the thing is, you can't see that normally. And, and just to kind of give you an idea here, if we, we go through, I'm logged into this account as user 99. And uh, if I look at my properties of user 99, I'm not a member of any groups, right? I have no special permissions. Now, if we look at a domain admin, and I know it is because I have it colored red, uh, and we open up uh, Active Directory Users and Computers, which is the graphical tool that you see, you use, you can get a lot of information. But we can see that I have a user account here, and it's called Unix User. One of these confidential attributes out there is called the Unix uh, User Password, right here. Now, as you see, there is an actual value here. I put in a value, just Unix password, great password, all right? Because, red because red, it's danger, exactly. Or red because of red teaming, which one? Hard to say. Uh, so Unix user password, we can see this as a domain admin, okay? But if we come in and we look at this as a normal user, and I'm not gonna use Active Directory uh, computers this time, I'm actually gonna use, uh, 
PowerShell, get AD user, uh, Unix user, and I want to look at the properties of Unix user password. Let's see if I can paste this in today. Sweet. We don't get anything, which is wonderful. Uh, so it doesn't return the values. Um, there, there's nothing there. If we do look at it in Active Directory users and computers, as uh, once again, a normal user, and if I go to Attribute Editor, if we go down to that same piece of information and for Unix user password, we see it's not set. We can see the attribute, but we can't see this information. It's hidden from us. Now, people often say, what are these attributes, right? What are these special attributes? Well, there's about 20 of them by default in Active Directory. I'm going to throw some more PowerShell here. I know I copied and pasted it. I'll be happy to put this search out there in the chat in a minute as well. Uh, but basically what this search is doing is it's saying, look in Active Directory, tell me all of the different um, attributes that you have assigned to objects and which ones are considered confidential. And we, it's not a easy way of picking it out, but it's because I'm looking for this bit value of 128. Um, doing Active Directory searches is its own kind of talk, but basically this query will go out and find all of those confidential attributes. And if we get them back, we see the list. And as I said, in the default Windows environment, there's 20-ish. If you add laps, it adds another one. So you're at like 21, 22. For those of you not familiar with Active Directory, this is the LAPS password. LAPS is a utility that will go out and change the administrator password on devices for you automatically, so you don't have the same password for administrator on every single Windows device. But we see that Unix user password is another one. Uh, we also have uh, the recovery key for BitLocker, all sorts of pieces of information. None of these are viewable by a regular user account um, in any way, shape, or form. The thing is, there are a couple of ways that you can start seeing this if you get some permissions added to your account. These are things that I'm looking for when I start mining information out of Active Directory. I'm going to use tools like Bloodhound absolutely because it does it very quickly, right? It will go out and it will find all the users. It will find all the people who have admin access to their workstations or servers. It will find wonderful pieces of information. But some things that doesn't necessarily tell you right off the bat are these permissions called rep replicating directory changes, replicating directory changes in filtered set and replicating directory changes all. These are a unique set of permissions that we can use to get information out of AD in a different way, not through a normal LDAP query like I did there before. The one that every attacker is looking for is replicating directory changes all. That means that you get to pull information out of Active Directory as if you were a domain controller. You can replicate that information out. It will give you everything, including password hashes. So this is a, a prime target, but one that I'm really not going to discuss too much because it's, once again, well known. It's things that you're going for. It's these other two, replicating directory changes and replicating directory changes in a filtered set that are often forgotten about and not looked at because the information you get out of them may or may not be that helpful, depending on the permissions and what attributes are there. So, you know, let's go through and, and you know, kind of understand this replication. As I said, there, there is this idea of pulling information out of LDAP, which is what I did before with that command, like get a to user. And also when I said, show me all of the confidential attributes, but then there's this uh, directory replication method. And it was built for utilities that need to pull large amounts of information out of Active Directory. And you don't want to do that through LDAP queries. It, it, it's built around this idea of a high watermark where I can run a query, it, the domain controller will return a large amount of information, and then I can run the same query again later saying, this is where I was before. Now give me all of the changes that occurred since the last time I looked for it. So it's a different way of getting information. And it uses this replicating directory changes attribute or, or um, uh, permission. That basically says you're allowed to replicate directory changes, but not everything. It's actually the least permissive. It just gives you the basic ability. 
it, it won't let you actually pull any information out of AD that has been properly configured as a confidential attribute. So I went through and I listed all of these confidential attributes. Most of them didn't occur with default Active Directory. They were put in later. All of, all of the original AD attributes can't be marked confidential effectively. Um, and one of those happens to be this Unix user password. The, way, the reason I bring this one up over and over and over again uh, is because you may or may not know that some AD administrators get a little lazy when it comes to how they manage their passwords. Not everybody uses password vaults. Some people do put passwords in Active Directory. Sometimes it's in clear text, forgetting the fact that once again, AD is readable by everybody. Um, I didn't think that anybody would do that. And then I had a few clients in the space of about six months, none of them very small, uh, that had fallen prey to this, right? They had service accounts, and instead of storing that password in the password vault, they actually put it in an attribute in Active Directory. One of them put in an attribute that you don't see in Active Directory users of the computers by default, but it was still there. Uh, I mean, I have other horror stories of things I pulled out of AD, not password related, things like, you know, this person to be terminated on this date, things you don't want to have in AD. So FYI, if you're actually an administrator of Active Directory, please don't let anybody store anything you mean to be confidential uh, in AD. It shouldn't be put there unless it's in a confidential attribute. But this Unix user password came up because I had a client that I was doing a pen test for. They were using this attribute to store passwords in. And as I showed, a default user couldn't see that. Right? You can't see it through LDAP. The funny thing is, for some reason, they had granted all domain users the ability to uh, do replicate directory changes. So what happens now is it changes our behavior a bit. If I come up to my account, nope, the right PowerShell window here. So I have this account, Dersync, and I could show you that it just has replicate directory changes. And why not? I'll show that here. Uh, all of my permissions are, are done through groups. And I have a group here that is called very eloquently replicating directory changes. And you'll see that my directory sync account is there along with two others so that they can do directory syncing. But this gentleman, Dersync is not a member of the other groups. So all he has is normal Dersync status, all right? I'm going to close my Active Directory users of computers window so we don't get confused. All right. Now, if I run that get ad user command again for this gentleman, I'm going to copy it from over here instead. If I run this, once again, why won't you show me my Unix user password attribute, even though it should be an empty value? There we go. So this ID has directory sync, right? It has the ability to do this information. However, when I use normal LDAP, which all of the active directory command lets use, I get a blank value. So I wrote a little script in PowerShell because PowerShell is still a perfectly viable tool in those cases uh, that would actually let me pull this information. So instead of using a normal LDAP call, what this is doing is it's going out and it's saying, give me the information via directory replication. And so the same user who could not see the password in LDAP has the ability to pull this down through directory sync great piece of information, right? Once again, here's a password in theory for this account. It, they thought it was hidden, but because of this simple permission to replicate directory changes, it was no longer hidden to me. Now let's say we look at attributes that are properly formatted, right? Uh, so let's look at, let's say laps, right? So all I have is this directory change, right? Replicate directory changes. I don't have anything else. Clear this to make it easier. If I go out and I say, hey, I have replicate directory changes. I should be able to pull any information, including all confidential attributes. I get this wonderful error. 
right? That says, hey, I have insufficient rights. And that's because if you set up a confidential attribute properly, it should have extra ACLs on it that say, yes, even though it's a confidential attribute and you have some level of rights, you actually need this extra special ACL mm -hmm. called control access on there as well. My poor user here, Dersync, doesn't have that extra ACL. It doesn't have those extra permissions. So I can't see that information. But that brings us up to the next layer of replicate directory changes, which is in filtered set. This sounds a little strange because we say in filtered set, which would make you think that it's less permissive than replicate directory changes, but it's not. It's actually saying that you can replicate directory changes for any attribute that's in a special selection of confidential attributes that get replicated to a special subset of domain controllers. Uh, they're called read-only DCs, not really pertinent to this idea, but basically it comes to um, you are able to replicate password information for some things, including some users. So what attributes are in this filtered set? Once again, we get to use this wonderful long string. Same general idea, it's just I'm changing my bit value that I'm searching for to give me the list of these attributes. It's a smaller list, it's a subset of that original list. And here we see, here's my, my admin password laps. So if I'm able to compromise an account that has that permission, we should be able to see it. So here's user 99, Dersync. Here is my other user, filtered desync, right? Good naming standard yet again, make it nice and easy. So this person, if we were able to compromise this account and we run that same query, using my script that I wrote, invoke uh, replicate directory changes. He is able to see that even though he actually doesn't have that ACL. Once again, if we looked in Active Directory users of computers, he would not see it. We would not be able to see it in any other way. But because he has this extra permission, he can now replicate it. So what does this mean? Overall, it goes to we, we have lots of tools that we use as pen testers, right? We have lots of ways of mining information out of AD. Um, Bloodhound will absolutely get these pieces of information saying who has replicate directory changes, who has replicate, replicate directory changes as a filtered set, who has replicate directory changes all, but it won't necessarily show it to you, right? And even then, it doesn't necessarily tell you what you can do with it. Everybody knows that replicate directory changes all. As I said, that, that's a well-known attack vector through Mimikatz. You use a directory sync. You pull down the password hash for any other user, including the one that lets you make Kerberos tickets, KRB, TGT. You can create your own tickets and move on. But these other two, even though they aren't as powerful as replicating directory changes all, still can provide a, a good amount of information depending on the directory that you're looking at at the time. So when I get onto a domain, I get a set of users, I drop, uh, I pull the ACLs for the root of the domain. I see if they have directory sync set up for anybody. Does anybody have that permission? Any one of the three, who they are. And then I see what are the confidential attributes? Have they added more other than the default 20 ish? Have they built their own? Maybe they haven't protected it properly and I can do something with it. Any number of those. I also then begin to look for other apps or identities that have these permissions, no matter which level it is. Um, you know, typically you'll, well, the, the account that's used for um, AD replication to Azure, the Azure AD Connect, the MSOL account typically, it has this permission. That's a good one to go after. Uh, things like Forefront Identity Manager, uh, a tool by Microsoft that allows you to replicate directory information will have one of these permissions. It may not have, uh, the directory, dire, uh, replicate directory changes all, it might have a lower one because it doesn't need to necessarily replicate directory or passwords. Um, you also, on-prem SharePoint still has this feature as well. So there are a multitude of IDs that might have this permission, just maybe not that end goal that we're looking for, but one of the lower level ones might still get you to that end goal. So I think I went through all of that a little bit. I know I'm a little bit early. Hopefully I have some questions, but I just wanted to cover it again, hopefully a little bit clearer than I did last time 
which was pretty much, hey, there's these cool things, run this script, and that's all you get. People have any questions? I mean, yes, no. I, I find it interesting. I've used it multiple times with some success. I did promise that I would paste my two queries to show you. Uh, my, my question is, how dare you say Active Directory is not a notepad? <laughs> I mean, that's what I that's what I thought it was for. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and yes, so yes, exactly. Uh, DC Sync D, just put that text file on the desktop of a domain controller. That's a good place. So <laughs> yes. Yep. It would be safer than in Active Directory itself, though. Uh, funny. It's kind of like, I don't know if you, any of you have uh, parents who aren't necessarily technologically savvy. I just recently got my parents to move to a, a, a password manager system. Um, before that, they were like, I stored it in my browser. I'm look, it, I, I said, it is safer for you to write the password down in the notebook and put it in, you know, somewhere, store it somewhere than it is for you to put it in the browser. Please don't do that. Don't do that. So, how about this? How we got? Uh, isn't there another attack uh, that you could do? So, I mean, technically, there are other attacks that you could do as far as pulling permissions. Um, I need a little bit more information, but yes, I mean, as soon as you get there, you have the ability to pull some passwords, password hashes out of AD, if it is a user that is actually having its password hash replicated to uh, one of those read-only DCs. I'm not sure if that's uh, what you're looking for or not there, but there are some other things that you can get. You can get other pieces of information. But all of these replicating directory changes are, are pulling information out of AD. Last call for more questions. I think I think you maybe you just did a much better job this time. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Or it's, it's not an exciting topic for people. Not everybody's into AD. I get it. Maybe it's not. not as cool as, you know, getting a, a shell on a remote server or, or the brand new hack that, you know, like Petit Patam or any of the other attacks against AD that give you root at your domain admin or administrator or, or system. Okay, perfect. But, but uh, as you have shown us it, it's, or told us, it, it still can get surprising bits of information from this. It, it is. It is amazing what you can get. I mean, yes, uh, I, I'm looking to... to, to Forgive me. So that's private. How can I not do private chat? Or is it li just listed as private chat? Uh, if you want to share something with the, the regular chat, you can put it in there and I can drop it into the main chat. All right. So that the first one here is going to be that I just pasted is going to be the show me all the confidential attributes. All right. Sharing that now. This is the attributes that are in a filtered set, not including Unix user password. By the way, I need to point out you cannot get the password hash with the script that I have. And actually, I can give that as well. I, I should probably give my script of where you can get it. Um, I will pull that out and also put that in this Discord later. Uh, the little script that I have here that runs in PowerShell to pull the information, which won't get flagged by AV, unlike Mimikatz and other things. Um, yeah, so misconfigurations get you where you want to go in AD. For, they absolutely do. And that's that's what I find um, is that the misconfigurations definitely get you into problems, right? Because yes, everything else eventually gets patched, but misconfigurations stay there forever um, mm -hmm. unless somebody finds them. So yes, and as you as you were this, saying, oh sorry, go did ahead. You get to this question: Do you have a good source on secure AD? Okay, so this is going to sound funny, but back in is it 2018, 2019 at this point? Microsoft released, and I can find the link and I can get it to you, um, re released a series of web posts on things that you should do to secure AD. And I say it's funny because it's that old. We're four or five years old now, but it's still been updated and it's probably still the best overall location to go to get a general idea of what you need to do to secure AD. It's a several piece set. And a lot of it is not Active Directory specific because... AD is, is like the end goal. If you're not securing your endpoints, if you're not securing your, your servers, you're not going to have much luck securing AD. So let me see here. Let me get my script. I know I have that link here. Uh, so here, here's a link for that Microsoft put out a while ago on best practices for AD. 
it's okay. going to go into things like account tiering, general ideas of, of what to do for practicing uh, for other things. And I have to get my. Uh, da -da. You would think I'd have my GitHub linked, but I don't have that quickly. I'll, I'll have to get. I'll have to put that in Discord later. Um, <laughs> so. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, one more final call for questions. If not, we're just uh, we're going to call it short and sweet. A lot of a lot of thanks. A couple of thanks. Awesome. Actually, here I can get to it this way. Oh, you got it now. I do. Uh, here we go. That's the script that I use to um, get information outside of Mimi cats. It right. will not let you pull um, password hashes though, actual user password hashes, because that's not exposed through the LDAP version of uh, replicate director changes. That requires DLLs and a whole bunch of other things, which is why Mimi cats does it. Cool. Awesome. All right. If you're watching this after the fact and you don't see the, uh, the chat links, we're going to, you should be able to get them on our Discord at uh, uh, InfoSec Learn Sharing. What do we call it these days? We changed it. <laughs> the old BHIS Discord server. Um, it's on there. And uh, I'll, I'll gather them up and put them on the YouTubes and in the descriptions. Uh, we are, well, we're just finishing up now, but we are on the live webcast chat in the Discord, which I, I hid my window and I don't know where I put it. Oh, there it is. Uh, webcast live chat in the InfoSec Knowledge Sharing Discord. That's where we are. Awesome. Well, I appreciate everybody listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come back and try and redeem my name. No COVID. Hopefully, I don't get COVID come Friday, and it's not a curse. So I think I'm good, though. My kids have been COVID-free. So <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Fingers crossed. All right. Thanks, everybody. It's been another AASLR. Tomorrow we've got another one, but it's going to be a, a another uh, CTF demo. Nice. Uh, which with Serena as she, I think it's another one that we're retiring. Uh, I know there's been some discussions if whether or not we should retire all the ones that we talk about, but I think tomorrow is another one of those. So join us again tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Awesome. And we're out.